much for joining us during this momentary distraction of simple amusements and magic. Well, happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to Fausted Company. My name is Chris Heron as Faust, and I am your host today on Faust and Company, and it is episode 27. Can you believe that? So I want to look into the comments section. I already see a couple of people. I always like saying hello if this is your first time tuning in. I see that Micah is out there. Hello to Micah. It's always a pleasure to see you, my brother. Um, happy Friday to you and everyone else out there. Now, our featured guest of the evening is waiting patiently in the green room. So we're going to pull him up in just a second here. But what I'm going to do is make a couple of announcements to um, before we get going here. So the first thing is, is that in-person shows are in at least in, in a little bit of a swing here. So I want to announce a couple of my friends' shows going on in Southern California. So check this out. Um, Jonathan Molo is co-hosting a Magic Meets Foods event that's in person at Haven City Market with at Rancho Cucamonga. And that's with Travis Martois. And if you're interested in going to that, you can uh, check him out on Facebook and he'll be on there and you could get all the information from him. That's Haven City Market. There's plenty of food. It's a it's an open market with alcohol and drinks, and it, it is just a wonderful place. I performed there before, and I'll be back in October to join Jonathan Molo at Magic Meets Food in Rancho. And also, if you're in the Simi Valley area, uh, check out my boys Raven and Migs. They host a, a show as well. This one is like an indoor uh, setting. It's a very, very classy place. Very nice. I think the place is called the Vineyards. They actually bring in Magic Castle performers every month. A different performer comes in. So if you want to get your fix, go to Magic at the Vineyards and uh, check them out. And I think their next show is going to be George Tovar. And then the following um, performer is going to be Simone Turkington in September. So check them out. So I'm looking over Ale Alexander Pinedo. Hello to you. And I can see that you are out in Puerto Rico. Pleasure to see you here and, and welcome and happy Friday to you. And I love your photo and smoking the, the nice cigar there. I wish I could have one. Again, Magic at the Vineyards, Raven and Migs in uh, Simi Valley. One last show that I wanted to mention, this one is called um, Not Acceptable Live The Long Con. It's a virtual event hosted by Daniel Gastelum, a very good friend of mine. He is paying tribute to the comic cons and the anime cons. This is going to be on YouTube live and it's free. So check it out. And I think you'll enjoy it because it's going to be a variety of performers on there, such as burlesque performers, magicians, and all sorts of performers. So check out Not Acceptable Live. You can find his information on Facebook as well. One announcement that I want to make on behalf of myself is that I have been recently appointed the Society of American Magicians International Assembly Envoy. 
and I was uh, appointed by the assembly president, Anthony Darkstone. And if he's out there watching, thank you so much for, for allowing me to take on that position. And many of you out there are probably wondering what that position is. Quite simply, an envoy is to, is, is position is to represent magic in good light through performance and through mediums uh, such as this, and also to bring awareness about the International Assembly and the Society of American Magicians. The Society of American Magicians, by the way, was um, presided by Harry Houdini in the early 1900s. So to carry on those traditions is a real honor for me. Uh, again, I see Jocelyn Aragon. She's here to say Dre Magics. He's coming on board. Thank you for uh, tuning in, Jocelyn. It's always good to see new faces on here. But again, if you support magic, please reach out to me if you want to become part of the Society of American Magicians International Assembly. You don't need to be an American to join. I could um, point you in the right direction. But if you do support magic, the one thing I would truly appreciate is we're just trying to spread more magic and bring awareness to the art form. And if you would, please share a, share the post, share the live stream, and just just keep bringing in you know um, people who support magic and spread magic because all we want to do is bring happiness and and positivity to the art form. I could see that uh, a, a real good friend of mine is 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 on board. And let me pull up his quote here. Richard Lake, I mentioned earlier, uh, this is Raven from Magic at the Vineyards uh, in Simi Valley. Uh, Raven, if you can, put your information on the, the comments and let everyone know where they could buy a ticket. Because again, they're about to sell out and the more um, people will slowly be buying those tickets at Magic at the Vineyards in Simi Valley, California. So Raven, please do that for us. We really appreciate it. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, I know that you are all here to see our featured guest of the evening. So I want to introduce him. I first met our featured guest on a podcast, Mick Diaz podcast. And it was a pleasure because it was a panel of Filipino-American magicians and Dre Magics was on there. He is a wonderful soul and a prolific performer. He has been making waves in the Asian community and Filipino American communities. And if you're from the Southern California uh, region, you'd know because you'd see him all over television and, and television that goes nationally within our communities. And he is also part of a performing arts academy called Palms Up that's led by Ariana Bosco, and it is a great pleasure to have him here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our featured guest of the evening, Dre Magic. Dre, welcome to Faust and Company, my friend. It's always good to see you. Welcome. How are you doing? <laughs> Good, my friend. How are things in Southern California? Just to get things started. Hot. It's very hot in here. <laughs> I smell like pork right now. <laughs> yeah. You, as you can see, I'm looking at the comments, Dre, and I want to just show you how much love you're getting out there with all the threes. Oh the threes, uh, at least on Faust and Company, represent applause. Love so they it. are all welcoming you here, and I welcome you too, Dre. You guys, I haven't even done anything yet. You guys are so good. <laughs> it's, it's all about the love, my friend, all Very about sure. the love. Dre, now, before we get started, some of, um, some of the people out there might not have seen your magic before. And, and so what I want to do is I want people to see your sizzle reel, and I prepared it for, for all of us. <laughs> So, and I want people to see the type of magic that you do. And I just love what you do because it is, you know, in on your website, you say it's in your face, but it's not the way I think it reads. I think it's it's very heartwarming and touching, but it is also progressive and 
it is in your face. So let me play this, Dre, because I'm quite excited about it and it's quite inspired by the scissor rule. So everyone out there, this is Dre Magic's scissor reel, just to give you an idea of the tone he sets in his performance. Here you go, Dre. like your old high school yearbook <laughs> well i'm glad i was able to bring back some memories yeah. you mentioned on there my friend and i and and once again uh, alexander's throwing you an applause for it but um you said spread love and what was the the line spread love spread and love spread. make magic make magic that is a wonderful saying dre i have to ask you know Everyone has an origin story, and obviously you do. After seeing your, your video, I was quite inspired because there were many elements in there that really, really touched me. And, and you know, you really interact with the crowd. You're right into the crowd, at least. What is your origin story in Magic, Dre? Uh, yeah, so I actually, a uh, grandfather of mine did Magic Tricks. And I didn't really get serious about it until after college. So this is, you know, post degree to like settle the the Asian in me to like be educated. <laughs> and so um, I started working, didn't really enjoy the job. So I quit. Yes. I told my boss I wanted to be a magician when I grew up, which yes. was cool. But I was like 20, 23 at the time. Um, <laughs> And I started, I didn't really uh, hang out with a bunch of magicians. I, I, I hung out with other artists, like musicians and stand-up comics and did the open mic scene. And I started working with two other magicians, um, also Asian, Lauro Castillo and Tambo out here in Southern California. And we were doing shows, but we we're also busking. So we we're street performing. Yes. Um, and then I get into this artist group. I have these mentors and they showed me magic could be something more than just wow, shock value, right? I can actually tell stories. I can communicate. I can connect with audiences through stagecraft and storytelling and actually writing. So, Right. And now I'm on the Chris Heron show. So, you know, <laughs> life is good. <laughs> Life is good, my friend. Yeah. Dre, then, so I have to ask, you know, we all start um, magic as, as a hobby. Right. Would you say that uh, it, it, it started off as a hobby or was it something that you knew that this was something that you wanted to do professionally or at least on a different level than what a hobbyist would do? Uh, it, it for sure started off as a hobby. I didn't really have any... Uh magic teachers right so i grew up in the the youtube era which i know is not so well received but you know i did the book thing i did the video dvds 
um, and just like tried to soak up as much magic as I could from anywhere. Yeah. Uh, seeing live. I had a friend that did magic. He showed me a few things, but um, I there was a point in me performing magic where there was definitely an imposter syndrome situation. Yes. Um, you know, I was doing I was doing magic for my family, for my friends. I did a few shows, but I was always struggling with um, oh, when can I call myself a magician? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When can I? When can I confidently say that I am a magician? And right, um, I think there was a day where I just, I just decided, like, start writing your story. You know, right. That's a good point. I imposter syndrome really exists, and you know, for people out there who don't know what that is, could you explain what imposter syndrome is for the non-magicians out there? Right. So um, imposter syndrome, it, it happens with a lot of artists, but it's basically, from my understanding and my experience, not feeling worthy of the title. Right. You know, you don't think you've done enough to earn this, this place in the, on the pedestal. Right. Right. Um, and it's tough. It's tough. I don't, I got lucky, I guess. I think, you know, we have a lot of performers, at least in the comment section right now, and I'm sure that at some point we've all come across the imposter syndrome where we thought that we didn't have the skill set just yet. Mm -hmm. And it's good that you've overcome that because it is a difficult thing, to say the least, as a performer. Oh, yeah. Now, Dre, I have to ask you, I, I know that you're Filipino, is, is, is that correct? Yes. And so, obviously, you've made pretty big waves in the community, Asian communities, Filipino-American communities. If you look at his client, your clientele, you've pretty much done every event that I could possibly think of in the, in the community. Was that yeah. all by design? Is, is that all by design? Is that something that you focused on with your magic was to bring magic to those communities? Um, yeah, I mean, before I met you and like our other friends, Jonathan Mola, Justin Rivera, um, I was the only one who did magic and was not white. You know what mm. I mean? Like I was the only Asian Filipino magician. Um, yeah. So I decided I, I kind of took up the mantle for myself and decided, let me bring this this art form to to our people, to at least like the Asian Americans in LA. Like you start small, right? You kind of, and it was well received. Um, yes. People liked it. I, I, you know, you try and be as kind as you can. You try not to be a jerk to anyone. Right. And I've been luckily blessed to meet amazing people and they've provided opportunities for me that um, that I really appreciate, you know. Right. I think it's important that at least within our communities, because it's true, I, I believe even within our communities, we are underrepresenting ourselves as Filipino Americans in the magic community. We don't really have too many faces. Now, do you still uh, keep in touch with your culture as far as the Filipino culture? Um, very much so. I mean, my I I live in that culture. That's who I am, right? Right. All the all that's how I was raised, and that's how I continue my life. I was actually born in the Philippines. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So, and, where where about Dre? Uh, Manila, Quezon City. So. I, I know that we have a lot of magicians probably watching right now that are, are from the area. Mm -hmm. Would you say, and the reason why I asked that question is, would you say that your magic, that your culture influences the magic that you do? Uh, definitely. I mean, the <clears throat> I, I really believe that I was, I was brought up with a certain type of humor, right? Where... Uh, I know it's common amongst the Filipino culture, uh, 
where you kind of have that like slight there it's like a little mischievous right yes you, you you say it in stride there's a little wink in your eye but it's a little it's a little mischievous um and i think that's okay because that's a really fast way to connect with people right um, i know for myself my culture comes out uh it was never my intention to showcase my culture directly in my magic uh my my intention was I can only tell stories that I know. Yeah. Right. My own experience. And then indirectly, I grew up Filipino. So some of the stories are going to be about growing up, you know, Filipino in a, in the States. Right. So absolutely definitely influences the magic. Now, Dre, what, what, who are your influences in magic? Do you have any specific like role models that you want to emulate or want to, look up or at least look up to in the magic world oh yeah i mean i started off in the blaine era right so david oh, yes. blaine um you know when everyone was trying to be a street magician right uh, that was that was an interesting time and then um bill malone bill malone is incredible oh, yes. he, he showed me that you can be funny and still be skillful right uh yeah. and i think you know, I I saw, and th this was just by chance, I saw a DVD put out by Daniel Garcia. Yes. And I, I enjoyed the way he performed. I enjoyed the way he carried himself in magic. And I just, I bought everything that he put out. Um, I can only do like 10% of it because he's like a maniac with his hands. Right, uh, right. But just the, uh, the way he carried himself, it was... It was always a party. It was always friendly. It was always um, out of. It was always lighthearted. Right. He never took himself too seriously. Yes. And I, I really enjoyed that that part, that side of magic. So you you mentioned a couple of things there as far as uh, performing magic. Yeah. You in your in your bio you you have taken on at least classes at the Palms Up Academy, mm -hmm. led by Ariana Bosco. Could you tell us what that is like and why is it important for you as at least as a performer? Right. So um, Palms Up Academy, they they do, oh, we do now. I'm part of the thing. But um, <laughs> we hold we hold classes. Um, there's a music program, but for for performing artists um, that focus on stage work, yes. know, actors, I guess I fall into their magicians and like stand-up comedians. Um, it's called Art Class for Creatives. Yeah. And it's basically a 12-week intensive course that yeah. that gives you the foundation to be so flexible that you can handle anything that comes your way in terms of performing, in terms of writing, in terms of anything like that. Uh, if you're in LA, I definitely would check that out because yeah. I I feel like I've grown tenfold by by doing it. Dre, I I know it's a lot of work. Just just doing magic alone to to build the technical skills, and then not only your performing arts skills. I have to ask the question: it it takes up a lot of time to do all these disciplines to make a great performance. I have to ask you. Why magic? Why does it have this so-called magnetic effect on people's lives or, or on your life? Why magic for you, Dre? Uh, for me, and I know we were joking about this before, but it's kind of true. Like, what else are we going to do, man? <laughs> like, we're magicians, right? But here's the thing. It's what I really think for myself anyway is... I, I grew up in a world where the rules um, were never in my favor. Right. Right. I came to America as a little brown chubby kid who like spoke very little English until he learned. Um, so when I found this thing where I can make my own rules, where I can create my own world, man, like how addictive is that? Like, right. I can do whatever I want. 
you know, take it. There are some things where there are moral things where it really tests your morality of, you know, right. yes, you can, but do the right thing. But in a world where the rules don't apply to you and you find a way to create your own world, that's, man, that's, that's, I found a cheat code. Right. <laughs> it, it truly is addictive. I think the magicians out there watching right now can absolutely relate to it because really there's no boundary to your creativity. And I know my friend Nick Sorensen is out there watching as well. And I I know he's a comedian. But that is the great thing about art is that it becomes really addictive because you're in this mode of creation. And I think that is something that we oftentimes forget to look at because we're so focused on the trick. But it's really what makes us feel. Now... On that note, Dre, I know that you hold your own podcast, and you actually brought up a very good topic that I that I tuned in and was keen in on. And you mentioned something about bringing your own authentic voice to magic, bringing your own style to magic. Could you explain what that is, at least for you, and how you came up with your own style of magic? What what inspired that? Um, yeah, I think when you start off as a working performer, your, your only job is, well, you kind of, the only thing in your mind is how do I get more work? Right. Yeah. And that, I think that's what drove me to figuring out who I was because yeah. there's this idea that I never want anyone to book another magician ever again, <laughs> ever. I, I want them, I don't want them to book a magician for their party. I want them to book Dre Magics for them. <laughs> right? Yes. And that's the thing. Um, how do you differentiate yourself from every other magician? Not even the world, in LA, you know, in California. Right. There's yes. like a million of us. Yes. We all we all hide in secret, but there's so many. Um, so how do you differentiate yourself? And the only way you can do that genuinely is be who you are right like i know your character is amazing and only you can do that character thank you um i don't have a character i'm just like myself but no one can be myself <laughs> right i'm the one with the fart jokes and the and the fire <laughs> eating <laughs> so it's like but I, I think you bring up a good point. And before I bring up this point, I wanted to say that uh, Ariana Bosco is here. So, you know, she she says Andre Echave is the best. So I just wanted to point that out to you. You have a lot of love coming in, Dre. So um, many. I gave her to say that. Um, <laughs> Ariana, you owe me $10 back. For <laughs> but what, what I wanted to say, Dre, is that I think, you know, we all – want to bring some authenticity to it. And I think that's the hardest part. And you brought that, that me and you have completely different characters. But what I, what I know that we have in common is that it really comes from the heart. Yeah. And, you know, that's what I love about your magic is that it comes from the heart, you know? So, Dre, I have to ask you, a lot of us have... A philosophy in magic or at least an approach right. when you when you have an audience before you what is your goal what do you hope that they walk away with after you perform hmm. mm. i want them to feel something yes and it doesn't matter what that is um even if it's anger towards me, as long as they're feeling something. Yes. Right? Because I think art and magic especially, it's just hyper empathy. You, you know what they're, you know what they're thinking. You know, Danny Dertis, this came from his lecture, but you know that this thing is blue and yeah. they know that this thing is blue, but also you know that they know that this thing is blue. It's a very complicated, it's very nerdy magic <laughs> thing, but 
that's what it is. I have to know what you're thinking to be able to make you feel something. Yes. Yes. And once you feel something, we're now friends. Yes. And, and I, I think you bring, bring up a good point, Dre. That's where the magic is. Yeah. And, I, and we had this discussion prior to the show about tricks and actually connecting with the audience. And I think you bring up a great point. It's more than just the blue mat in front of you. And I appreciate what you say because I, I love hearing when performers mm -hmm. really try to create a feeling or an experience with people. Which brings me to um, one of my points. I seen you perform something. So I'm gonna encourage that everyone out there, uh, if you get a chance to see Dre Magic, you also sing. Am I correct? Okay. So, I saw. <laughs> I, I did, okay, time out. I didn't I mean to put you on the because, spot, but listen, hold on. <laughs> so everyone out there who who knows Dre, time out, time out. And, and <laughs> if everyone out there who knows Dre knows that that was the only time he sang well, on stage, I have to say though, I didn't. Well, if that was the only time, I I must say that the one thing that I got out of that, and I, I know that you, you did a routine singing, and it was a little piece called Starkle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I have to say, I didn't know, if that was your first time, I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. But what I saw was a magician, a gentleman out there putting his vulnerability out to everyone. Yeah. And that to me, that to me spoke so much. And you know, the reason why I brought it up is because I, I, you know, hope that I can accomplish something like that too. Mm -hmm. Is to really bring vulnerability to a performance because you touched my heart when you did that. Thank you. Um, what was the inspiration behind that though, Dre? Uh yeah. So that trick, for all of you magicians out there know for sure. That trick is not mine. Like, yes. the trick is not mine. It's by Dan Harlan. Um, if you want to learn it, it's on a video from the 90s or 80s or something. Um, but, uh, and his story is much more different. Yes. Um, but that's the thing. That's, that's my creative process is where I would take, I never try and do something stuck, if that makes sense. Right. Like, I'll take a thing, but I... And maybe it's part of imposter syndrome also, but yeah. I won't call it mine until I've added something that is mine. Right. Um, and that story, it, and here's the thing when you create too, this, the story itself doesn't have to be true. There are bits of, there are bits of truth in it, but as long as your intent and your emotion Yes. Behind it is genuine. Yes. Then it's it becomes a piece. Can you tell everyone what song you sing during? Uh, yeah. That so form? um, so Starkle is you. There's a piece of paper and you rip out the section of the paper. Yes. And you open it up and it's a circle, and the piece that you've torn out magically for some reason is a star. Yeah. Um, so that's the trick. The way I decided to write it, the way it was originally written is, um, I think he he wanted to be a star and see the stars or some something like that. Um, it wasn't strong enough for me personally. Right. My my bit is, I sing when you wish upon a star. Yes. So a Disney song. Um, and my grandmother really did sing that to me as a kid. Uh, and I read somewhere about this theory or this like what if of what if you were a star with one wish left? Yeah. And I kind of just put it together and added, you know, you, you immerse yourself in the world of your piece now. Right. So um, if I'm getting sung this and stars were made for wishing, what can what can be the what can be the conflict there? 
right conflict is you're selfish. You're a little kid, and you, um, and then you resolve it, and you just find the the pathway to resolution. Um, right. But the the inspiration was very much my grandmother would sing to me every night. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't be that same song, but right. How I felt is what's important. Right. How I think yes, you're you're absolutely right, Trey. You bring up something. I think as a, as an artist, you you certainly have the right to create, you know. And but so as long as it's true here, then people will connect with that. I wanted to bring up too that um, Alyssa mentioned that you are multi talented, and Alyssa, I do agree with you. You know what, Alyssa? Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> it's 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 great to see that you're getting so much love as far as uh, people watching. And here you go. One more for you. Magnum says, yeah, Dre, go on. Oh, so, Magnum, what's up? Dre, I have to ask you, do you have anything in the pipeline coming up as far as where people can see you perform and whatnot? What, what do you yeah, have so, in the works? Um, this weekend, if you're free Sunday, I'll be at the 626 Night Market in SoCal. I go on at 6.50 p.m. It's a 30-minute set. should be a good show. Um, in October, I have a time-traveling magician act with my buddy uh, Masato, and that show is called Remember Tomorrow. Okay, Remember Tomorrow. Remember tomorrow. We're going to put it on in October, probably in L.A. And I know every year I hold a Christmas show called Happy Holiday, and it's it's my ode to the to the variety shows of the '90s. Oh, wonder you know, Christmas variety shows. Yes. So, um, that's gonna happen. I promise that's gonna happen. <laughs> I will put that on my last pizza. <laughs> Dre, I I'm gonna I I would like to have people find that information. Where is the best? Is it your website or Facebook? What is the best way to see where you're at? So, um, my website www.dremagics.com D-R-E-M-A-G-I-X oh, it's right Good. there um, <laughs> if, you, if you forget just say Dre Magic with a Filipino accent and you'll remember <laughs> um, that's where it came from yeah. and, uh, my Instagram is at the Dre Magic so T-H-E D-R-E-M-A-G-I-X if you're the guy also who has Dre Magics as their Instagram sell it to me <laughs> because I, I need everything the same okay <laughs> it looks like a um I'm just going through so Magnum says 60 he put he put the uh show that you have coming up in the comments so I want to make sure that everyone knows 626 night market show in and where is that going to be located Dre It's at I think it's in Arcadia somewhere it's in the that 626 area <laughs> I gotta look oh, up the address. Oh, I'm so bad at promoting. Oh, in Arcadia. Okay, I know where that is. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Dre, you also have, and I would, I would like to, you know, um, talk to you about your podcast because I, I, I love it because it's short, it's sweet, and it covers specific topics. Could you tell us a little bit about that, and is that going to continue on? Yeah, for sure. Um, we the oh man, the year before the pandemic hit. 2019 me and a bunch of friends started a youtube channel yeah. and we put out one youtube video every day which is crazy um i think in one year we put out like 240 videos or something uh it's called three sweet productions it's still on youtube we are starting that back up soon but one of the shows was magic monday and it yes. was just me and my buddy Masato, who we're doing the show with in October. Right. We are. Um, we really wanted to talk magic, but have it be digestible to lay people. Right. Um, right. We wanted to ex not expose the way magicians say expose, but we wanted to uh, kind of uncover this world of magic and give people a peek to why we love it so much. Right. Um, so there's topics there like the imposter syndrome. We're talking about how to start in magic. You have a, okay. you know, it's, we also keep it fun. We're like top three favorite magic acts 
on right. America's Got Talent, whatever it is, right? Uh, but I, I really enjoy doing it. We are in the planning stages of the next season, so it'll come back. Soon. Good, good. So everyone out there, uh, you could find Dre. I'm going to put up your Facebook. So you're also on there as Andre Chavez. Excuse me, I think I spelled it wrong there, but let me correct that. That's without the end. But I guess they could find you on Facebook. Find and there's Facebook. the correct spelling there. And also on Instagram, The Dre Magics. And I you know you mentioned that because someone else has the name you said. Yeah. So if anyone out there has that name, please contact my man over here so he can get it back. I'm willing to pay you in candy. <laughs> so I don't want to do a spoiler alert, but I... I know it's in the early planning stages for everyone out there. I know that Dre Magics here had an idea of bringing in Filipino magicians together, and you know, and and uh, when he told me that, I was quite excited about doing that because I completely support the Filipino American community. Dre, could you give us a little tease of what you and Jonathan Molo are kind of working on? as far as bringing in some Filipino magicians together in the, in the near future. So um, <laughs> the five to seven best Filipino magician acts in yeah. the States are gonna get together. We're gonna do a show. You're gonna see each of our different stuff. None of us are the same. Yeah. None of us have the same style. You're gonna see magic through the lens of Filipino magicians, how we operate, how we perform, where excellence has to be like already implied. Right. right. So no doubt in my mind, all these acts bring so much heat, but you're gonna get to hear stories, you're gonna get to see stories, and you're gonna get to feel stories. And that's what we're about. I'm very excited at least to be part of it or at least to help out, Dre, you know, and I'm looking forward to your productions that you have going on in the future. So everyone out there, please give this guy a follow. He's definitely a progressive magician making waves in all sorts of communities. So I'm looking forward to it, Dre. Dre, before we wrap up this show, I always ask my featured guest 10 questions. Okay. <laughs> Let's do it. Pressure. Uh, let's do it. Okay. You guys heard it out there. Dre said he's okay with it. He's Quick giving fire, it. rapid lightning <laughs> round. Let's go. So these aren't difficult questions at all, my friend. So there's but no math. No math. No math. I'm because not, I'm not good at math. You know, I'm not, I'm not that kind of Asian man. <laughs> We're not the engineer types, right? We're the magic types. <laughs> We're the magic types, whatever that means. Right. You know, my I cannot, anyways, that's another discussion because I can hear my mom saying, you know, oh, oh my son is a, a magician, but, yeah. but that's a different story. <laughs> Dre, okay. these questions are 10 questions. Yeah. And these were actually inspired back in the Victorian era, which is an era that I truly love and research on my own. And okay. these questions were a parlor game to kind of get to know a person, predominantly performers and okay. actors of the sort. And it was made famous by a Victorian poet by the name of Marcel Proust. Okay. But in a more contemporary and modern time, if anyone out there watches Inside the Actor's Studio, James Lipton really took these questions to another level and he asked celebrity magicians. So I kind of tweaked it. I am, he is one of my idols, so in honor of James Lipton, I kind of tweak these questions to ask magicians what they thought. And I'm hoping that you would be able to contribute a little bit about yourself in these questions. Cool. So Dre, these are called the Lipton questions. Dre, the first question that I have for you is what is your favorite magic word? My favorite magic word is love. What is your least favorite 
magic word? Uh, watch. <laughs> watch. Watch. What turns you on in magic? A really thought out act that can incite emotion. Well said, Dre. What turns you off in magic? People, magicians who, who put themselves on this pedestal because they know something other people don't. What sound or noise in magic do you love? Can I, can I cuss on this thing? On Absolutely. Thing? Oh, <laughs> oh, shit. That's my favorite, that is my favorite thing of all time. <laughs> you can never underestimate that word, my friend. What sound or noise in magic do you hate? You know the sound when you hear people texting? That. Because yeah. it's like, oh. <laughs> truly is, truly is annoying. Dre, what is your favorite cuss word? Um, it's uh, it's shit, but it's spelled S H I E T. Yes. Oh shit. <laughs> It, it gives it a little bit more melody, you know? Right, right. Yeah. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Salesman. Interesting. What profession would you not like to do? Nursing. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's very dangerous, my friend. Very dangerous. <laughs> and finally, our very last question, Dre, of the night. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? You did good. Well said, my friend. Dre Magics, it has been a pleasure to have you here and have you answer these very insightful questions. Your magic is inspirational to myself and I'm sure to many people out there. If everyone out there is, is watching, please follow this guy and be sure to watch him. Dre, do you have anything, any last thoughts or positive words you want to say to the audience tonight before we go? Um, yeah, thank you guys for having and listening and make sure you go out, hug a loved one, spread love, make magic. Spread love, make magic. Thank you so much, Dre. We appreciate it and we hope you can come back to Faust and Company. And everyone out there, thank you so much for tuning. My name is Chris Heron as Faust and this is Dre Magics and we will see you again later on. Good night, everyone. Good night.